I'm Carolyn Canock from Lake Ponderé Waterkeeper. And for our first chapter, we're going to discuss the formation and importance of lakes. To begin, we need to understand where lakes come from and why they're important, not just to us, but to all life on Earth. Lakes can be formed through a variety of different geological and biological processes. These include glaciers, volcanoes, landslides, the movement of tectonic plates, human-made dams, beaver dams, and more. Most lakes are considered young or newly formed in terms of geologic time, even though they usually last a human's lifetime and over the course of generations. However, lakes also age. Once they're formed, they start to fill in due to rivers and streams bringing in sediment and other debris, and eventually completely fill in and become a whole new environment. There are many variables that determine how long a lake is around, such as size, the surrounding habitat, how it was formed, and human influence. Maintaining healthy lakes is important to sustaining life on Earth. A wide variety of diverse organisms live in and around lake ecosystems all across the planet. Freshwater lakes provide clean drinking water, not only for animals, but for us, too. All living organisms need water to survive. Around the world, many communities use surface water, such as lakes, streams, and rivers, to provide clean drinking water. For example, here in Sandpoint, Idaho, our drinking water comes from Lake Ponderé and Little Sand Creek, which drains from the Selkirk Mountains north of town. The water in our community water systems is taken from a freshwater source, treated at a water treatment facility, and then distributed to our homes. After we use it and flush it down the pipes, the water then flows to a wastewater treatment facility, is treated again, and then is often pumped back out to a nearby water body. It's important to realize that the same water we use to swim and fish in is also sometimes the same water we use at home. This is just one reason why we need to work to protect our freshwater sources from pollution and misuse. In addition, all of our lakes belong to a watershed. A watershed is an area of land that drains to a specific body of water, such as a river, stream, or lake. A watershed includes everything within its borders, the water, the land, the air, the plants, the critters, and the people. The world is made up of hundreds of different watersheds, and many smaller watersheds can make up a larger watershed. Water eventually flows downstream, and what happens in our watershed could ultimately impact another water body downstream. Water doesn't obey state lines or national borders, so protecting a single body of water requires the work of many, not just one group or agency. For example, the Lake Ponderé watershed is up in North Idaho, but our waters eventually drain into the mighty Columbia River, which runs between Washington and Oregon until it finally spills out into the Pacific Ocean. That means that a drop of water that starts high up in the mountains above Lake Ponderé could eventually flow through our watershed, out to the Columbia River, and end up in the Pacific Ocean. Every watershed is different, but we all share the responsibility for protecting our own. So when I'm talking about our watershed, I'm not just talking about Lake Ponderé, but also about all the streams and rivers, the mountains, soil, air, animals, plants, farms, cities, and people that live within our watershed boundaries, as well as everything else downstream. The world of lakes doesn't just include a specific body of water. When I'm talking about a lake ecosystem, I'm talking about the lake's entire watershed, the surrounding area, and all of the creatures that depend on the lake for valuable resources. So now that we've learned about how lakes are formed, their importance, and how connected they are with the world around them, we'll be able to go more in depth about the fascinating ecosystems underneath the surface. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in our next chapter about the science of water in lakes.